Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. elements together and the result an exciting spellbinder greed is a frightening disease of the mind and spirit it debases and cheapens all it touches it cannot be satisfied indeed it stimulates a desire for more and more it is a mental sickness of civilization it has no reason welcome home man welcome home Sorry, I can't embrace you, my dear wife. But my arms seem to be tightly strapped to my sides. Doctor, order your attendants to release him. Mrs. Leif. Release him. I'm strapping, Fred. Mm-hmm. That's better. Much better. Now, will you all please leave? So I may be alone with my husband. Yes, yes, of course. Goodbye, Pam. Come in. Now, aren't you happy to be home, Van? Oh, yes. Happy. Very happy. <laughs> no. Van. No. No, wait. No! <laughs> mystery drama, License to Kill, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars Joan Loring and Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by Luden's Medicated Cough Drops and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. to visit her husband. And all through that long drive, there was one overwhelming and compelling thought in her mind. She must get him out of that place. The words mental institution were too repugnant for her to mention, even to think. She must get him out. It was the only way. She must do what she had secretly planned for over a year. Van, will you look at me? I'm speaking to you. Turn around, dear. Face me, please. No. I thought you'd be glad to see me. Yes. Van? Yes, I'm glad. Glad to see you. Do you know why I've come? Is it rainy? Why, yes, yes, it is. Why do you always come to see me when it rains? That isn't so bad. Oh, yes. Rainy days, you come. It always rains when you come. Would you rather I didn't come, Van? Yes. Yes, don't don't come. Don't come. You don't mean that. You know I want to do everything I can for you. You want to do everything you can to get my money. That's unfair. Unfair? I remember. I remember. You think I'm so mixed up in my head that I don't remember. You tried every way you could to get control of the estate, but you failed. Please, Van, you're wrong. Wrong? I was wrong to marry you. Don't say that. You know I could have divorced you when... When I was put away. Don't think you're protecting my feelings. I know. I know I'm insane. You've told me. The doctors all agree. Hopelessly insane. Locked up for life. Go away, Mary. Go away. Leave me in peace. Would you like to come out? What do you mean, come out? 
In my custody. I'll take responsibility. Responsibility? You? I want to take care of you. I think you'll be happier out. Out? Exchanging one cell for another. What will you do? Have guards posted? Mail nurses around the clock to watch me? No, you'll have attendants, but not guards. You'd be taking a big risk, Mary. I tried to kill you once. I'll take the risk. And almost succeeded. I'll take the risk. Well, I can't help but admire your courage, Mrs. Latham. But I don't know that I can go along with your plan. Van isn't getting any better here, Doctor. It's my impression he's getting worse. Reports from his therapist confirm... Wouldn't he have a better chance in a more normal environment? My dear Mrs. Latham, let me lay out the facts for you. Your husband came to me in a very serious condition. He was dangerous to society and dangerous to himself. He displayed all the pathological symptoms of an acute paranoid. Mr. Latham is a potential hazard. A latent time bomb. The least little spark could cause an explosion. I've heard all this from you and others before. I still feel that I could help him regain his foothold. Bring him back. I know he can become again the man I loved and married. I'm afraid you've got some romantic idea in your head. It's not some romantic idea, as you call it. Things can be done with love to heal him where all the medical science of the world fails. I see. Well, I must tell you that I shall oppose your plans. Mr. Latham will not leave this hospital if I can help it. Huh? Well, back so soon. Come on, get in, get in. Well, had to go. The way I expected it would. No good. Oh, what's your next move, baby? Start the car and let's get out of here. This asylum atmosphere has me depressed enough already. Sure, sure, sure. Well, you're in there a long time. I had to make it look good. I had to spend a little time with Van. Still catching those imaginary birds in his room, huh? No change. Worse than ever, I think. The doctor tells me he's fine, just fine, but... Yeah, but they won't unlock the door of the padded cell, right? Will, you're not funny. Well, I'm sorry, baby. I knew it wasn't going to be easy getting him out. Well, frankly, uh, you know, I think you're looking for trouble. We're happy, aren't we? I mean, having him behind those strong, heavy institution doors is great with me, so why can't we go on as we have been? Don't play stupid, Willie. You know why I have to get him out. Come in. Hello, Mr. Rossiter. Oh, Mrs. Latham. Sorry if I've kept you waiting. My secretary... Quite all right, Mr. Rossiter. I didn't mind. Yes, uh, good, good. Uh, sit down, won't you? How can I help you? I saw Van Saturday. Oh? Well, uh, how is the poor boy? Not good. In fact, I think the... Uh... The place, the home, is making him worse. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I am sorry to hear that. It's disheartening to think of him there, locked up like some wild creature or animal. I, I was hoping you might have good news. Maybe I have. Yes? But I'll need your help. Well, my dear woman, you may count on me to give you all the help you need. Mr. Rossiter, I propose to get him out. Out? Oh, well, uh, do you think that wise if, as you say, his trouble is worse? I intend to take him home where he belongs and take care of him, bring him back to our world. Well, Van is a dangerous psychopath. The doctors all agree. I can manage him. Well, have you forgotten that, that he... he tried to kill me, no. Mrs. Latham, may I ask why you want to do this? Why? Because I love him. And I want him back with me. <laughs> Hello. Oh, uh, Mrs. Latham, this is Charles Rossiter. Oh, yes, Mr. Rossiter. About that matter of obtaining, uh, well, about Vans coming home. Yes? I went to the hospital yesterday. You what? Yes, I went to the hospital yesterday to How see... How why? Why? Well, for several reasons. Mr. Rossiter, I can see no reason for you to visit my husband. But when I saw you in my office, you said you wanted his release. I can't see how your visit would facilitate that, Mr. Rossiter. Well, I... I... I still think you took more on your shoulders than I had requested. Yes, I see. But uh, please, listen to me. Go ahead. I spoke with Van. Yes? He doesn't want to come home. I know what's best for him. And 
And I spoke to his doctor, too. And he's opposed to it? Yes, yes, totally opposed. Mr. Rossiter, you are my attorney. You are working for me. I told you what I wanted. I asked you to prepare papers. I did not ask you for your personal feelings in the matter. Uh, well, <clears throat> I shall do whatever you think best. Good. But I must warn you. Van says that if he gets the chance, he will kill you. You'll have to get your things and clear out of the house for a while, Willie. Clear out? They're bringing him home today, and I don't want you around when that happens. You know something, Mary? You should be in the institution. I think you need psychiatric help as much as he does. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, this whole idea's crazy. You know he's dangerous. You don't love him. So what reasons do you have to take the risk? It's all very simple to understand. I've told you before. It's a little matter of money. Yes, but you've got plenty of money. It's enough for both of us. Enough for you, Willie. You have modest tastes. But I feel like a child on a strict allowance, and I hate it. All of Van's money was put in trust for him by his parents before we were married. Did you know about his mental condition when you were married? Of course I knew. His father told me about him. However, it was thought to be a mild and temporary condition at the time. It was only after we were married that the condition worsened. Mary, but what money was there? You knew what to expect. The real money was locked up in a trust. I thought that after I was married to Van, and especially after he became violently psychotic, that I could have the trust set aside and the money put into my hands to administer as I saw fit. No go, huh? No go, unless he should die. Do you understand, Willie? Unless he should die. Oh, Doctor, I thought... Where's my husband? He's here, waiting in the car. May I speak to you for a moment? Come in, come in. Well? You've won, Mrs. Latham. Your husband is being returned. He's waiting outside. So you've said. Why not let him come into his home? It was necessary to bring two attendants with him, Mrs. Latham. Regulation? No, it was necessary to control him. He brought him to you under restraint. I don't believe that's necessary. I saw him a week or two ago. He was quite calm, under control. This is no longer the case. Despite the fact that he's under heavy sedation, he resisted violently when told where he was going. Now, do you have the proper staff to take care of him? Please don't concern yourself, Doctor. I can manage. The two men I have with me are trained psychiatric nurses. I will have no need for I them. I urge you to keep them with you until he becomes accustomed to his surroundings. Doctor, this is his home. He is accustomed. He is familiar with it. There will be no problem. Very well. I'll have him brought in. Fred, Ralph, bring him in. I hey. hope you won't regret this. Really, Doctor, I find this conversation tedious and unproductive. Well... My dear wife, it's so nice of you to invite me. Welcome home, Van. Welcome home. That has a familiar ring. Sorry I can't embrace you, but my arms seem to be strapped tightly to my sides. Doctor, order your attendants to release him. Mrs. Lee. Release him. Unstrap him, Fred. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's better. Much better. Now, may I ask you all to leave so I can be alone with my husband? Yes, of course, Mrs. Latham. Goodbye, Van. Come in. Well, Van, aren't you happy to be home? Oh, yes, Mary. Very happy. Very happy. <laughs> No, Ben. No, stay away. <laughs> Mary Latham may have opened the legendary Pandora's box. It isn't going to be quite as simple as she had envisioned it. In her lust for money, Mary has overlooked the danger of turning a homicidal paranoid loose. I'll be back in a moment with Act Two. Mary Latham was a headstrong, compulsive...
impulsive woman who had to have her own way in everything. But she was beginning to wonder if perhaps she had reached out too far in her nefarious scheme to get her hands on her husband's money. Then she discovered, despite his mental illness, will not be so easy to handle. The future course of her actions is still cloudy and ill-defined, but there is danger there, whether or not she knows it. Where have you been? I've been trying to reach you all evening. Didn't they give you my messages? Well, this isn't the Ritz, Mary. You surprised me to find out they've even got a switchboard in this flea bag. Now, what's up? What's up? I want you to come here right away. Well, it's nearly midnight. I want you to come. It's urgent. I can't talk to you over the phone. Hurry. Sure, sure. I'll be there in 20 minutes. It was frightening. He started to laugh, and then he lunged at me. If he could have caught me, he would have strangled me. He fell, crashed through the glass table, smashed the lamp. Yeah? He didn't get up. He just lay there. He was heavily sedated when they brought him here. It may have just caught up with him when he lunged at me. Wow, well, the place sure looks like a tornado hit it. Oh. Where, 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 where is he now? In there. I dragged him in and locked the door. Can he get out? Easily, through the window. Easily? Well, if you can't hold on to him, don't you think you should call the police? No. But I... Mary, this isn't a game. That that guy in there is dangerous. Now, when that sedative wears off... Listen to me. I don't get it. Look at you. You've got a nasty cut in your forehead. You, you, you've nearly been strangled. It's all to the good. It's evidence for the police. I want him to escape. I want the police to hunt him down. I know, Van. He won't give up. If they think he's dangerous, if he puts up too much of a fight... He may be shot. Oh, well, there's a lot of ish there, baby. Now, and I'll give you another. If they catch him alive and healthy, you'll never get another chance at him. Are you suggesting we do it here? Now? What? Huh? Well, what are you saying? Now, now look, I, no, I don't want to get mixed up in any murder. You wouldn't run away, would you, Willie? <laughs> I was only testing you. The first idea is best. Let the police do it. That's the window in the next room. He's gotten out. Good. I'll give him an hour's start and then report it to the police. What are you tearing your dress for? Making it look good. I've got to put on a show. The man is dangerous, officer. Homicidal. It was all my fault. I thought that bringing him home, giving him my love and kindness would cure him. Bring him back to the real world. I see now how wrong I've been. (laughs) <laughs> That's not bad, huh, Willie? <laughs> Who's in there? Now, speak up, whoever you are, huh? I got a 12-gauge shotgun in my hands, but I know how to use it. You come out of there and you won't be hurt. See here, I know you're in there. My hens don't like strangers. Now, you come out and come out quick. Cold. Cold outside. I went in there to get warm. Well, you sure are a sight for sore eyes, mister. Why, you're all tore up. You've been bleeding. Been in some kind of auto accident? No, no. Fell down. Oh, come on in the house. Now, what you need is a good meal and some eggs and bacon and a cup of hot coffee. Does that sound good? Yes. I am hungry. You want another cup of coffee, mister? Oh, no, thank you. I've had enough. It was all very good. I was very hungry. I'm very grateful. Well, don't mention it. Uh, I'd like to pay you. For what? Your kindness, your generosity. Oh, no, that is spoil it, young man. Now tell me, what kind of plans you have? You going back to your folks, your family? No. Now, you don't fool an old lady like me, you know. I, I've been around too long. You're running away? Yes. Who from? The police? You escaped from jail? No, no. Well, why are you running? I can't tell you. You you might not want me to stay here if I told you when I want to stay. Oh, now look here, young man. 
I'm, I, I'm all alone in this house, and I'm an old lady, and I, I, I don't know. I'll work I'd... for you, for my keep. I, I need the time. You see, it'll only be for a little while until I can get myself together. Well, if you're going to be working for me, you better get your rest. Now, uh, your room is the last one on the right. Bed's all made. Good night. <laughs> Well, there you are at last. Come on, get in, get in. You kept me waiting for nearly half hour. I'm sorry, Willie, but I had so many things to do. Why are we always driving around in a car? Why are we always meeting on street corners? The house is surrounded by the police. How would it look if they saw you coming in and going out at all hours of the day and night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw your sob story in the paper this morning. Ah, sincere, wasn't it? Yeah, I only wanted to do what I thought was best for Van. I loved him and I wanted to cure him with my love. Whew. Aren't you overdoing it? Don't you see? I've got to establish myself as a foolish but loving wife. Mm. I even wrote a long and tearful letter of apology to the doctor. Yes, I know. You sent a copy to the papers, too. I read it. Say, what time is it? Huh? Oh, it's a few minutes after seven. Uh, the doctor, Vance Doctor, is on the news. Turn on the radio. In answer to a criticism made of my policies, I want to state here and now that I oppose releasing my patient, Van Leighton. An order was obtained in the courts forcing me to release him. I have a letter here from Mrs. Latham who is responsible for this dangerous situation, apologizing for her act. I will say that it was all done without thought as to the consequences which are serious. A madman is loose in our city. A dangerous paranoid. He may look harmless, but I assure you he's a killer. That's what I want to hear, Doc. If you see this man, you will find pictures of him in your local papers. Do not try to apprehend him yourself. I repeat, do not try to apprehend him yourself. Think anyone would have to that? Please, Mary. A special number has been set up. It is 555-2323. I repeat, call 555-2323. The police have been armed with darts containing an almost instantaneous tranquilizer. It is painless and humane. Shut him off. And will render the man uncut. I don't like that. Why not? I don't want him knocked out with tranquilizers. I want him shot down. <laughs> You, fella. Call him. Call him me? Yeah. Come here, I want to talk to you. Well, I thought I'd chop a little wood for the fire. Uh-huh, nice job you're doing. Now, I got something to talk over with you. Yes, ma'am. Now, first, you got to stop calling me ma'am. Everybody around these parts been calling me Gammy for years. Yes. And now I got to tell you something else. A postman brought me the Gazette this morning. I know. I saw. Well, that's your picture, ain't it? Right there on the front page. That's my picture. Says you're a dangerous man. I am. <laughs> I didn't think you'd admit that. That proves to me you're an honest man, Mr. Latham. There's uh, a reward. $5,000. Yeah. So I read. Offered by your wife. She must like you real bad off of that kind of money. Oh, no. Hmm. You don't want to go? Go home? No. I found more peace, more kindness, more warmth here than I've known in my life. I feel like I'm getting well here. Hmm. That's so. Now you can call the police or turn me in. I won't fight you. Turn you in? What for? $5,000 is a lot of money. You could use that, I know. Oh, that's silly nonsense. I wouldn't think of it. I wouldn't even consider it, not for a minute. Hello? Yeah, Mrs. Latham? Yes? This is Dr. Harrington calling, Mr. Latham's doctor. I recognize your voice, doctor. The reason for this call, I see that you have offered $5,000 for the apprehension of your husband. Don't you think that's enough? I think you shouldn't have offered it at all. Oh, indeed. Don't you realize what you're doing? This is a matter for professionals, the police. You're encouraging ordinary people to hunt for him. And what's wrong in that, Doctor? Your husband is a dangerous man. You know what can happen if he's seen and an attempt is made to capture him. What would happen, Doctor? Why, it might result in serious injury or death. To whom? To the individual trying to make the capture, or to Mr. Latham, if the individual is armed. Oh, dear, I didn't realize that... Then you'll withdraw the 5,000 reward. 
Yes, I shall. I will make it 10,000. What? If he is so dangerous, wouldn't it be fair to make the compensation higher? To make the risk more worthwhile, Doctor? Why, you, you... <laughs> Now, Van, you're sure you want to do it? I'm sure, Cammy. Oh, I drive into town myself, except my arthritis is kicking up. Oh, I'll go. And if we wasn't out of feed for the chickens, and in them old clothes that belong to my son Jonathan, nobody'd know you was Mr. Van well, uh, With the beard I've grown in the last week or so, nobody will recognize me. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, now watch yourself with the old pickup. She's a little tricky in second gear. Stick sometimes. And he just get out and kick you. And it works every time. I'll sleep that for it. Take care, boy. Good morning. What can I do for you? Uh, I want 50 pounds of chicken feed. 50 pounds? Hmm. Here you are. Cash or charge? Uh, charge. To Gammy. Uh, uh, Mrs... Harry Anson. Sure. Uh, Gammy, huh? Are you waiting for her? Yeah, yeah, stand, stand right here. Oh, yeah. I didn't know Gammy could afford a hard man. Oh, she can. Hmm. That's her old pickup out there, ain't it? From the store? That's right. She just comes in herself. Of course, he, uh, has arthritis. Again? Ah, uh, too bad. Hey, you want some help with the feed, getting it into the car? Oh, no, it isn't heavy. I can manage. I, uh, I, uh, I just thought... I got a package for Gammy. Come in about three, four days ago. Sent out a notice to her. Did she get it? She didn't say. Uh, you might well take it along. Save yourself an extra trip. Uh, you want to wait a second? Very well. Uh, put the feedback back at the counter. Yeah. Right with you. <laughs> uh, uh, Mabel? Sheriff in? Get him on the phone quick. Charlie? Ed? Look, you know that crazy guy they're looking for? It's in all the papers. Name's Latham. Well, he just walked into my store, recognized him from the picture in the paper, bought some chicken feed. Huh? Keep him here? Well, how soon? Make it, make it quick. And, and there's a $10,000 reward. We'll split, Charlie. 50-50. Now, make it fast. Had a little trouble finding a package, mister. Oh, I could have gone along without it. D don't make a move, mister. I've got you covered. I'm taking no chances with you. One move and I'll let you have it. What are you doing? Now stand there. Stay back or I'll shoot. I'll kill oh, you. Give oh, me... Let go of me. Sheriff will be here. He'll be... You, you shot me. It had finally happened. Death, which has hung over everything like a bird of prey, has struck suddenly and disastrously. Van is no longer an escaped patient from a mental institution. He is now a hunted killer. The concern an average man might feel for a sick person had been replaced by panic and fear. Now, society was menaced. And the first thought is to destroy the thing that frightened and menaced it. I'll be back in a moment with Act Three. It was greed that prompted the offer of reward for the capture of Van Latham. And it was greed that prompted Ed Bowers to attempt the capture of the hunted man. How much more tragedy can be squeezed from Mary Latham's selfish offer? Time is running out. The hourglass has only a few grains of sand left. The evil has festered and must break open in final violence. Six and a three, Willie. Not a very good throw. Looks like you're going to have to leave two blots. Ah, uh, my luck. I'm no good at backgammon, Mary. I can't throw the right numbers. Oh, that's the complaint of all poor players. It's skill, not luck, that makes the difference. I double. Yeah, well, I drop. I won't take the double. Ah, it's $4.40 you owe me. Ah, what difference does it make, huh? It's all your money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You can't lose if you do lose. 
Sure, you sure know how to make a person feel good, don't you, dear? <laughs> oh, come on. Set up the board, I'll play you another game. No, I'm tired. I don't want to play. Tired of that gammon or tired of me? No, Mary. Not tired, just weary. Oh, yes? Yes, all this business about your husband. You trying to get control of his money no matter how you do it. I... And that wearies you, dear? Money wearies you? No, 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 but I'm not... Well, I'm... I'm not up to you. I haven't got your single-mindedness, your, your drive to get what you want. I... Well, I like a more relaxed life. Are you trying to tell me something, Willie? Well, Mary, listen. I'm listening. Go ahead. On oh, the phone, wait. Hello? Who? Oh! Yes, Lieutenant. Yes? Oh, that's... That's horrible. And he... My husband. Is he all right? Where did all this happen? Upstate. Yes, I, I understand. But if you can take him alive, I know you will exert every effort to do so. But... Yes, I know. You must consider the safety of your men. Yes. Oh, yes, I will pay it. Thank you for calling, Lieutenant. He's done it. He's finally done it. What's happened? Van's killed a man. Post office feed store in a little town upstate. The man recognized Van from the pictures in the papers. He tried to stop him with a shotgun. Van wrestled the gun out of the man's hands and blasted him. Uh, the man's been killed? Yes. Don't you see what that means? Now the police won't hesitate to shoot. What? Uh, and you engineered it all, Mary. That's right. Now the police will do my work for me. You know what the lieutenant said to me on the phone? He asked me if the reward was still good if they had to shoot Van. And you said yes. Of course. It won't be long now. He said that almost the entire state police force was on this case. S suppose he comes here. Suppose he comes here to kill you. I, I think you're number one on his list. Let him come. See this, Willie? Revolver. And I have a permit for it, too. So if the police don't get him, you will. Oh, I expect they'll beat me to it. This house will be under constant surveillance inside of an hour. If the police get to him first, that'll spoil things a bit for you, won't it? I don't know if I like the sound of that remark, Willie boy. What's boiling in that little brain of yours? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Just making a joke. I, you know, I, I wouldn't do anything or say anything to upset you, don't you, Mary? Well, at least not when you've got a gun in your hand. Who's there? Ben. Oh, you poor boy. Well, now, come in. Come in. Oh, yes, I... I've been hiding out in the woods all day. I had to ditch your pickup. Oh, the police brought it back to me. They've been here then, huh? Been and gone. I said I didn't know who you was. Just a hobo looking for some work and for a place to put his head. Yes, that's a pretty accurate description of me, Gammy. Looking for a place to put my head. Oh, you must be weary and hungry. Can I get you something? No, 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 no. I, I can't stay. Get you into trouble. I had to come back and thank you and tell you how much you've done for me. Oh, it wasn't much. I ain't got much. Oh, you've got more. You've done more for me. Oh, my boy, boy, I... I feel like you was one of my own kin. Well, that's what I've been trying to say. These few days here with you have done more for me than all the doctors I've known in my life. More than all the treatment in all the hospitals. Are you... Are you going to give yourself up, man? No. No, I can't. They'll kill you and you don't. They'll shoot you down just to collect that reward. They'll get you dead or alive. Now that Ed Bowers is dead... Well, I didn't have... want to kill him, Gammy. It was an accident. He threatened me with a gun. We wrestled and the gun went off. I didn't want to hurt him. I just wanted to be left alone. Oh, I believe you, but they won't. You've got to give yourself up. So they won't kill you. I wonder if it matters. It matters to me, Van. All right. If you want me to, Gammy, I'll give myself up. Oh, I do. And who knows? Maybe they'll let you come out someday and 
and we can see each other again. Yes, Lieutenant. Yes, I know you will. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. The police have reason to believe he's still somewhere upstate. Yeah, running for Canada. Probably. They say that the Canadian border patrols have been alerted to be on the lookout. Ah, oh, just like an old movie, eh? Well, I can see it now. Snow falling, wilderness, Royal Northwest Mounties. Very funny. I wish you'd lay off the bottle. You're drinking too much and you don't make sense most of the time. Well, that's my excuse. What's yours? Will, I'm bored with your company. Will you go home? Home is where the heart is, haven't you heard? You're drunk, and I don't want to continue this stupid conversation. Go back to your hotel. Never. Hey, what do you think I am? Think I'd leave with this danger? What do you take me for? There's no danger. The police say they don't believe there's any chance of his coming back here. Yes, but the police have been known to be wrong. Suppose Van comes back here. I don't need you to protect me from him. Oh, I know, I know. But who's going to protect him from you? Hello? Uh, Mrs. Latham, this is Cooper Harrington, your husband's doctor. Yes, doctor. I've heard on the radio and television that they're searching for your husband upstate. Yes? I don't believe he will try to run away. I believe he will come there to you. Oh? I know him very well. I know how his mind will work. He has it in his mind to kill you. All our tests, analyses, hypnosis have revealed this one strong abiding hatred for you. Now, it is my opinion... What are you worried about, Doctor? Frankly, I'm worried about my patient. That bounty you've put on his head... You don't approve. It's a license to kill. It makes killing profitable. He'll be shot down. Perhaps. But after all, he is a killer. He's killed a man. I am only his doctor, not his judge. And you're not concerned with the safety of other people? You're not concerned that he will try to kill me? Of course I am, but... I don't wish to continue this, doctor. I feel the entire problem is in competent hands. I am not the least bit worried. Thank you for your interest. Yeah. Is the doctor worried about you? No. About his patient. Yeah. Well, I guess there's not going to be any excitement here tonight. Why? Oh, I was looking out the window while you were on the phone. You know that squad car with the two cops who've been outside the last few days guarding the house? Hmm? They're gone. Then the police must have captured him or... Oh, better still. Knocked him off and guaranteed your inheritance, right? Oh, I have a number to call for information. The lieutenant gave it to me. <gasps> then... oh. Put down the phone, Mary. Put it down. I'm not here to hurt you. Why? No, Van. Why should you hurt me? I'm going to give myself up to the police. Give yourself up? Oh, do you think that wise, Van? You've killed a man. I didn't want to. That was an accident. That doesn't matter. They think you're a killer. You've got to run away. I'll help you. I'll get money to you. I've got money ready for you now in this drawer. You've got to run. If you believe that, Latham, you're really crazy. What? Shut up, Will. Then believe me, you've got to get away. Don't run. You're dead if you run. You hear me? She wants to see you dead to get your money. Shut up, you! No! no. no Mary, no, you wouldn't. You... Uh, don't! Oh. You, sh you shot him. Stand back, Ben. Stand back. Why? Why? He, he wanted to help me. Back Give out. me that gun. No. Give it to me. Give it up. Oh. Oh. Why did you do that? Hello, Lieutenant. This is Mary Latham. My husband came here. Attacked me. I had to shoot him. A stray bullet hit an innocent person. I wish to make the following statement, knowing that I haven't long to live. Mary Latham shot me because I wanted to warn her husband that, that she intended to kill him for his money. Mind 
if I sit next to you, Mr. Rust? No, no, doctor. Sit down. It's a sad occasion, isn't it? You were his doctor, weren't you? Yes, for several years until... Well, why go into that? Mm. You know, I like to remember Van as a small boy when I first knew him. Pleasant. He was a happy, friendly youngster. Hmm. I was just thinking that it's rather a small gathering to say farewell to Van Layton. Yes. Had no family left. Just her. Well, she's not here today. I think the authorities have a fairly tight case against her. Mm-hmm. You know, that statement made by that uh, associate of hers... Yes, I would say that the state will have no problems. Rather sad that Van is going to his final resting place. Only his doctor and his yes, soul... His old attorney are the only ones to see him off. I noticed someone else when I came into the chapel. Sitting in the last pew. An old woman. Sitting all alone. She was crying. And so the comedy is over. Three men have died, and the woman whose desire for money lighted the fire that consumed the men will face a jury of her peers to account for her actions. Greed is an evil hunger that feeds on its own appetite and can never be satiated. I'll be back in a moment. of the chapel and wept for her adopted son, whom she knew for only a moment, and for whom she would grieve the rest of her life. Perhaps Van had known and rejoiced in that moment of peace and love. Perhaps the first and only love he had ever known, the only peace. Our cast included Joan Loring, Larry Haynes, Earl Hammond, Sid Sloan, and Mary Jane Higby. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You said I looked 19 or 20. I'm only 18. Well, that's great. I'm 25. I was born in the year 1554. Well, every girl should marry a more mature man. Did you hear what I said? I was born in 1554. Sure. That means you have to be more than 400 years old. See, it's the same thing for men. They should also marry mature women. John, (laughs) I was 18 years old in the year 1572. (laughs) I've been 18 years old ever since. I simply don't grow older. I can't grow older. That's fantastic. (laughs) Do you realize how long I've lived? How many lives I've lived? (laughs) What What an absolutely tremendous imagination. I'm telling you the truth. I can't grow older. I can't be killed. I can't die. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Luden's Medicated Cough Drops. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>